Today we're going to be talking about the last InDesign assignment and it's called the Cablecom Newsletter Assignment. The directions are right here. It starts off with the page setup directions about the margins and how to save it. This image right here is actually what it's supposed to look like. One thing you need to keep in mind is look at the margin space. You get, this is the top of the paper here and you got Cablecom. So everything's kept within the margins and you'll see this as I show you. One big tip that's going to help you a lot. Words to know. You're going to need to know what kerning is, what tracking is, what letting is, and drop caps. I'm not going to walk you through the whole thing, but I'm going to help you get started. You're going to open up Adobe InDesign. You're going to create a new document. So you're going to click New Document. By default, on our computers for some reason, sets everything in PICUS. You want your page size to be letter size. That's 8.5 by 11. Well, that's uh, PICUS for 8.5 by 11. And it's portrait. It says divide page into two columns. It needs to be portrait. It says deselect facing pages. So uncheck that. Columns, two. Gutter spacing, 0.5 inches. It says one PICA. To do inches without having to convert your units and in increments, you can put 0.5 space IN and then just click down here. Half an inch is three picas. So it converted it for you. If you unclick this link, now watch what happens. If I change this top margin to f that, it changes all of them. To get it to not do that, you click on this little link thing and it only lets you do one at a time. That's what you want. The top margin is 0.75 space IN. And then you click in the bottom. One space IN. So you remember half is three and one is six. Your left is one space IN. And your right 0.75 space IN. Top should be 4P6, bottom 6, left 6, right 4P6. Now you're ready to start. Click OK. Now these are your margins. That's your gutter space. That's your top margin, left margin, right margin, bottom margin. So that was 1 inch, 1 inch. 0.75, 0.75, and this gutter is 0.5. Your Cablecom title, you're going to want the top of it to be right in the margin. You don't want to be anything outside of this margin. That's the first major tip on this assignment. Now, notice the ruler is still set up in PICAS. If you want to go ahead and change it to inches, you just go InDesign, Preferences, Units and Increments, and change it to inches on horizontal and vertical and click OK. So now that's one inch, one inch, 0.75, so you can actually visually see it. So the page is set up. Now on the directions, once you got the formatting right, let's go ahead and save this. So you're going to go File, Save As. This is 1A, so you're going to type 1A underscore last name, first initial, Cablecom. It's a good habit to go ahead and save. So we're going to Save As. Go to your documents, fifth, six weeks. 1A underscore last name, first initial underscore Cablecom. Save it in your fifth, six weeks folder. I'm going to show you a few things. I'm not going to go through the whole assignment, but there's a few things that you need to be shown to know how to do. The title Cablecom, which is this right here, is a sans serif font, Arial. So we're going to choose Arial font and it's 72 point bold. Italicize the comms throughout the, the whole thing. So I'm going to select that and italicize it. So I'm going to start that first one. I'm going to click the text tool. I'm going to click and drag. I got a text box that spans the whole margin. Now I'm going to go window, type and tables, character. And I got the character panel right here. And it said 72. I'm just going to go ahead and type 72. And you see the cursor get bigger. I'm going to choose auto for that. The font is Arial, so I'm going to choose Arial, regular. I'm going to go back to the directions. I'm going to type this, cable com. All caps. 
let me look at that cable com all caps and I need to center it so I'm going to highlight this you can go up to the cool options bar and choose align center or you can go window type in the tables paragraph and get the paragraph panel and choose a line center right there you don't have your tool options up there you can go in the paragraph panel so it's centered now it's said to italicize the com I'm select that com choose italic right in the character panel so I got cable com might adjust that text box there the next one a lot of people get confused about is this box here you want to create this gray box it talks about company news brief is Arial 10 point bold. Insert symbols were shown. These are just little squares you draw with the shape tool. And it talks about this rectangular box. Stroke one point, fill line, solid, registration 10, shade 10. Let's draw that. Get the rectangle tool. And I'm gonna draw a rectangle. With it still selected, I'm gonna go to my window color there's and I can drag this K in the CMYK to 50 percent and you might have to adjust the size a little bit depending on your text one thing that might help is if you go to your layers panel and you got this rectangle selected you might lock it into place. That way, when you try to add text, it doesn't make you turn this into a text box. Now, we are going to do the next part, which is type company news brief, and it's Arial 10 point. I'm going to get my text tool, and I'm going to do it outside of the box for now, and I'm going to choose Arial bold 10 point. That way, it's the exact size as it is in the example. And I'm going to type company news briefs company news brief readjust that text and I'm gonna put that there you might see the blue boxes here and you might say I don't want that when it prints well it's not gonna show that when it prints but if you want to see what it looks like when you're done printing all you got to do is go view over print preview view over print preview doesn't show all the blue boxes oh one more thing we forgot to do on this gray box we we're supposed to add a stroke it's supposed to be one point black make sure you choose black in the stroke up at the top right there and it's one point black as it says in the directions stroke one point line fill solid registration 10 percent shade so view over print preview see you can see the black stroke right there so you might need to adjust this all right one more thing I wanted to show you on this gray box here it's supposed to be black and the stroke is black the thing is you want to choose the fill and then you go right to the swatches panel and change the tint to 10 percent there you go now the stroke is still 100% but the fill is 10% it's black but at 10% it looks gray so that's actually how you truly do it according to the directions for the solid registration 10% shade now the next thing I'm going to show you then we'll skip on to another part is these little square boxes right here the simplest way to do this just get the rectangle tool choose black and just simply draw a square and then you can use your arrows and put it right there you zoom in I want it to be exact square so I'm gonna to go to the transform palette and I'm gonna do 0.12 by 0.12 there that's more square that might be a little too big for my taste so I'm gonna do 0.1 by point one a little better but just use the arrows and align it where you want it to be in the example there's one more of those so if you want to just quickly duplicate it 
select it, hold down the option key. Here, let, let me zoom in a little more so I can kind of click in the center. Now I, I click on it, hold down option, and it allows you to create a, a duplicate real quickly. And there you go. So option, click, and move over, and it, it brings a copy out. So you got your second one. You're still going to do a monthly publication of Cablecom Inc. You make sure you italicize the com, and you're going to do June 2014 instead of 200X. You're going to do 2014. Now the next thing I want to talk to you about is it says text body. All the body text is Times New Roman. 12 point letting at 13. Letting and tracking is in the characters palette. The captions underneath the clip art are Arial, nine point bold, tracking 25 point. Soar to new heights is Arial 14. That's right here, soar to new heights. And don't forget we got these graphics. You're gonna have to right click, save images as, and save them in your fifth, six weeks folder, and you're gonna place those in the frame boxes. One thing that people always get confused about is these drop caps. So I'm going to show you how to do a drop cap really quick. The headline text is text aerial 14. So that's new video phone sales off great start or Cablecom annual spring fling company picnic. That's the headline text. Body text is this right here, the regular paragraphs. So I'm going to show you how to do the drop cap really quick. I'm going to get the text tool and I'm going to create a text box right here. You want to make it within the margins of that column. To get a drop cap, it's really easy. Just for review, a drop cap, that large C that drops two lines, just kind of decorative. See how the first letter of every paragraph drops two lines? The first one is Cablecom's new video phone. Let me set my uh, font to the size. They said it needs to be Times New Roman. regular Times New Roman 12 point letting oh 12 point time New Roman so the size needs to be 12 letting at 13 that's tracking right here the letting is right here it needs to be 13 that's how close they are in between the lines so we're gonna type cable comms new Video Phone 2000 just released in March. H had a 22% increase in sales during the month of April period. So we got that whole paragraph. Notice I didn't do anything to the big C yet. All you gotta do is select that paragraph and go to the paragraph panel. If you don't have your paragraph panel, you can go window, tools and type, paragraph. Now in the paragraph panel, everybody pay close attention and look where I'm pointing. You see this bottom left corner, you see the big A right there? That's the drop cap number of lines. And by default, it's one. The directions want you to do it two lines. Notice when I put it to two, it changes the C for two lines. Now, if I chose three, the C increases even more. Four, it does more, five. So you can adjust how big you want that drop cap. It's pretty cool. You can even go further. If I wanted the first two letters, you go over here, drop cap one or more characters. I could do the whole cable comm. I'm just trying to show you right now. We're going to leave that at one and we're going to set the drop cap number of lines to two. And that is it. And notice how it fits pretty identical to the graphic. Now you might slide this down and you're going to create your caption. Be sure you create that caption, new video phone sales off to great start. Now you also have this line here. Now you could either do a rectangle box. Or you could use the line tool and increase the stroke. Probably the easiest is just to do a rectangle box. Right there. I'm going to go view, overprint, preview. 
Everything's starting to come into shape and space out. Don't forget that headline right there. If you size everything according to the directions, everything's going to fit inside the margins. This last part, people always miss this last part. It says, insert footer, your name and date. You notice where it says, insert footer? You need to put a text box, center it, and put your name and today's date. Your name and the date right below the margin. One last thing I want to show you is uh, these images. You need to download these, so you're going to go right click, save image as, go to your fifth, six weeks, and that's speaker, save. Right click this one, save image as, that's glove, it's in your fifth, six weeks, save. Right click, save image as, balloon, fifth, six weeks. See, you got the arrow, fifth, six weeks, save. One more thing I want to show you with this glove. Here, we're going to recreate this. I'm going to create a frame. Create a frame right there. And I'm going to go File, Place. I'm going to go to my fifth, six weeks folder and find glove, open. That glove's too small, so I'm going to go Object, Fitting, Fill Frame Proportionally. Here, I'm going to make it smaller and just do it again. Object, Fitting, Fill Frame Proportionally. So I got the glove here. You want your text to wrap around it. Now that I got this selected, there's a wrap around bounding box. You choose that when you got that selected. And whenever you create text, no matter what, it's not going to go through or on top, it's going to go around. Let me just show you. I'm going to create a text box here. That needs to be Times New Roman, regular, 13 point letting, all cable com employees and family members are invited to attend this year's Spring Fling Company Picnic, period. Drop cap, set it to two. You got to select it right here. So I got the drop cap right there. One thing I want to show you real quick. Because I set the text wrapping on this image, you see, I move this over, and this spreads out again. I move it closer to the image, and it spreads out according to the image. See, it puts the text around it. It wraps around it as you move the text box. See, I move it under here, and it goes around it there. So that's what text wrap does. You might need to resize the image to try to get it close to fitting just like the example. That is pretty much it. Just save your progress and keep following the directions and be meticulous making sure everything looks right. Place the rest of the images in there. Don't forget about the text wrap and just keep going. And that is it. Thank you all for watching. Hey class, if you like this video, please click like below and subscribe to this channel. Also, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.